On this week's episode, we talk pregnancy myths and how massage can help combat your morning sickness. and how chiropractic can help you avoid low back pain or at least reduce it throughout your pregnancy. So first we're going to be talking about uh, three pregnancy myths that a lot of people believe. Uh, the first one is that I can't get adjusted during my pregnancy. So Dr. Mike uh, has two daughters and he has a, a third child on the way. His wife is seven months pregnant and he sees a lot of pregnant women and a lot of kids. Mm -hmm. uh, so Dr. Mike, what do you say to that when uh, women say, well, I can't get adjusted? Because I'm pregnant. Is, is, in my opinion, as long as you have a heartbeat, you can be adjusted. So any individual can be adjusted. Now when it comes to pregnancy, there are things that we have to change throughout the course of, of the term of pregnancy. The beginning portions of pregnancy, the only thing we really change is that little bit lighter force in terms of our adjustments. The, the hormones that get released into our body or into a female's body called relaxin, relaxes those ligaments. We have to be a little bit more gentle in terms of the adjustments themselves. As they progress and get further and further along um, uh, during the course of pregnancy, they obviously are going to be becoming uncomfortable to lay on their bellies. That being the case, we have them sit on the table, we check the joints for motion then, and then we can adjust them either sideline or face up in the areas that we would normally go just simply face down for. Right. Very safe, very effective for, like I said, for just anybody to be adjusted, so there's nothing that says that you can't be adjusted while pregnant. Gotcha. And so with the relax, and obviously that's um, there to help the pelvis uh, be ready to uh, uh, deliver the baby, but it affects the ligaments uh, along the joints as well, correct? It affects every ligament in the body, right. so it, it relaxes the ligaments to, like you said, allow the pelvis to open up, but can affect the hips, can affect the neck joints, the shoulders, the knees, any other joints can be involved as well. Okay, so the alignment of the spine is so important, but also uh, strengthening around uh, the muscles around the spine as well. So Dr. Rob, uh, in terms of posture, what are the things that uh, that happen during the pregnancy that really affect that posture and can, can create that back pain? The biggest thing that happens is now we have more weight in the front right here. So what it's going to do is it's going to actually rotate the pelvis forward like this. But your body's not going to stay in this position. It's going to want to keep your eyes level. So you're going to have to arch in your back. And you're going to see an increased curve right here. Mm -hmm. That causes more compression in the lumbar spine. It causes more back pain and hip pain with people. Okay. As that progresses and things even get tighter, you'll see people kind of walk with where their feet are kind of out. You'll see them kind of waddle and kind of shuffle a little sure. bit. So paying attention to hip muscles as well is really important for that. Okay. And Dr. Mike, when, uh, when they finally do have uh, the baby, obviously that's a pretty traumatic um, experience. A lot of times people spend, you know, dozens of hours in labor, laying in a hospital bed. Once they're, uh, they've given birth, it's probably a good idea to, to continue coming in for treatment after that as well. Absolutely. So I, I typically tell my patients that when you feel comfortable enough to be laying on your stomach, laying on your side for a period of time, that's the best time where it's come, good to come in. If uh, a woman has to have a C-section having the birth, mm -hmm. definitely check with your doctor to make sure first that it's okay to have pressure be put onto your, your lower back or your abdomen um, with the laying positions, things like that. But absolutely, as soon as, you know, as soon as they're, they're feeling kind of back to normal, they can get up and move in on their own. Mm -hmm. Very important to get in and get things checked out because once again, that ligament relaxin or that hormone relaxin that allows everything to relax and open up, right. as it starts putting things back together, if they're put back improperly, right. it's just going to cause issues going forward into the future. Okay. And then a lot of uh, a lot of moms are bringing their kids into the office, you know, basically as newborns, and that's you know that's a touchy subject with some people because they think that we're adjusting them the same as we would, you know, a full grown adult. I know that you adjusted your kids uh, the day they were born. Uh, talk a little bit about adjusting like newborn babies. Okay. Yeah. So, you know, a typical adult adjustment is a full on manual adjustment. We use our hands, 
the thrust, the force that goes into it is significantly different and decreased when it comes to dealing with kids. With kids, you know, newborn babies especially, their bones aren't even bones when they're first born. They're simply cartilage. Right. So not as much force is required to make the corrections, as well as they just don't need the same type of treatments that, that we typically need. Typically just a sustained force, you know, using fingertip, sustained force on the area that we're working on is about all that it takes to make the corrections that we, we need to. What I always tell parents is that if, if you could go back in time and get rid of all the problems and issues that you deal with currently mm -hmm. by getting adjusted as a kid and all the way throughout your life, why would you not want to get yourself adjusted as a child? Right, that makes sense. So the second uh, myth that we're going to be talking about is nutrition based and that is that you can't eat fish uh, while you're pregnant. Um, so what say you got? So everybody's, everybody's major concern is mercury levels mm -hmm. with fish. So it's just certain types of fish that we should avoid, like a lot of bottom feeders, like anchovies, um, some catfish, things like that. Mm -hmm. Another thing to keep in mind is really having like Far, or like staying away from farm raised fish, you really want the freshwater fish more. It's healthier, it isn't like grown in a sweatshop essentially. Sure. So, um, I would recommend finding you know a store where you they have good quality meats, you know, maybe like Hy-Vee or Food Fantasies here in Springfield. Mm -hmm. They really have more of the organic foods that we're looking for at this time. Okay, and any kind of supplementation that you can recommend? Fish oil, I mean, fish oil is always going to be helpful. Mm -hmm. Um, it's, it's just going to be an all-natural source of good fats, and also it's going to be anti-inflammatory, but also a folic acid for neural tube development is really helpful as well. Okay. And I would, I would kind of uh, say the same thing about the supplements as I would about the fish in terms of we want to get the highest quality, High quality. fish oil and folic acid that we can. You go to Walmart and buy you know, some fish oil, it's probably not going to be as high as quality as you can get um, from a healthcare professional. Uh, so the third myth that we have is that uh, women can't work out during pregnancy. So Dr. Mike, you're uh, active in CrossFit. Uh, your wife is seven months pregnant and she's doing CrossFit as well. Uh, what would you say to people that say that women shouldn't be working out? So if you're already in some type of workout program, protocol, training program, whatever, you can continue doing that going forward. So like you said, my wife is, is due in the next couple of weeks here and she still does CrossFit four to five days a week. Heavily modified though. She, there's you know weight restrictions and certain movements that she just simply can't do because of being pregnant. Sit ups, push ups, because anything with pressure on the belly or being on her back for an extended period of time. But she's still able to do the workouts and be very active without having to do those things. Just changing what she's doing, you know, on a on a day to day basis. Right. If you're not currently involved in some type of a, an active program or exercise program, starting with just simply walking would be a pretty good place to start. We have a personal trainer here in our office, Rainy, that you've seen in a couple of our different um, bits here. She's very, very good at working with any individual, but having a, a tailor-made workout protocol for you if you're just starting out fresh would be a really good place to start. Okay, so even if you're not working out before you get pregnant, pregnancy is a great reason to, to start at least getting into something. Absolutely. You know, a lot of a lot of individuals, you know, females will think that, oh, I'm pregnant, I can eat whatever I want. They gain too much weight initially. That's obviously not the, the goal of pregnancy. You know, the goal of pregnancy is yes, you're gonna gain weight, but you wanna do it in a good, healthy manner, and then making sure that you're staying active or getting active um, would be important as well. Great. Uh, so that pretty much covers the, the three pregnancy myths that we wanted to go over today. Uh, we're gonna take a quick break, and when we come back, we're gonna be talking with Daphne about how therapeutic massage uh, can help you avoid pain throughout your pregnancy. Uh, if you have any questions for any of the doctors, uh, make sure you go to wellnesslab.tv and there's a section there where you can submit your uh, email questions. And we'll also have a PDF that uh, goes over some of the tips that we covered today in our film. Uh, we'll take a little quick break and we'll be right back. Hi, I'm Rainy. Welcome to the Fitbit of the Week. This week we're talking about pregnancy. So I'm going to go over three core exercises that are safe to do throughout the entire pregnancy. So you might wonder, why are we working on our core? You know, your belly's going to grow, you're not going to have a six pack the whole time. Um, so it's very important to work on your core while you're pregnant because, first of all, you're carrying more weight in the front, you're going to start to have low back problems. Also, there's something called diastasis recti. Um, this is the separation of your rectus abdominis, your six pack muscles. Um, as your belly grows, they tend to separate and you kind of have a small opening here in the, in the middle. Um, and we want to keep them closed as much as possible. So there is a way to prevent that from becoming too wide. Most women do see some level of this happening just, you know, as your belly is expanding. But you can keep it from happening too much. 
So that's what we're going to work on. We're going to work on strengthening our transverse abdominis, which are the deep muscles here on the side that kind of work as a corset. So they're holding everything together. Um, and we're going to do that by doing a lot of planks and then something called a bird dog. So I have Brooke here with us to help demonstrate the planks. Um, the first one we're going to do is a front plank. And I will mention before you ever start um, exercising when you're pregnant, do consult with your doctor. Make sure that it's safe for you. Um, and also listen to your body. So if you are tired before the workout, you know, listen to yourself. You know, I'm not ready to do this today. Or if you're doing the workout and you become very exhausted, stop immediately. Um, don't push yourself too hard. All right, so back to the front plank. We're going to do, we're going to show you some different levels of difficulty also. So the first thing we're going to do is she's going to go down onto her forearms and she's going to keep her knees down. So this would technically be the easy plank. So she's going to keep those knees down and then the, the elbows are right below the shoulders and she's going to hold it there. She's going to keep her back nice and flat. We don't want to raise the hips up to arch the back and we don't want to lower the hips down to create a little dip there in the back. It's going to cause some back issues there. So just keep it nice and flat. Um, and another way, obviously, you know, as your belly grows, it may tend to touch the ground as the pregnancy continues. So you can go up onto your hands with your hands right below, right below the shoulders. And then again, straight flat back. And she still has her knees on the ground. All right. So the next, uh, like I said, this is technically the easy plank. So the next one we're going to go to is more difficult. We're going to show you first back down onto the elbows. And then she's going to pick her knees up and she's going to be up onto her toes. Again, she's keeping the back nice and flat. She's not dipping. She's not arching. She's keeping it nice, nice and flat there. All right. Again, as your belly grows and may touch the ground, you can go up onto your hands just like that. And again, staying on her toes and the back is still flat. Just remember when you do go up onto your hands on this one to collapse to your knees when you're finished. So obviously you're not collapsing all the way down. Common sense, I would think, but all right. So that is it for the front plank. Next we have side planks. So this time she's going to be on her side with her feet and her knees stacked on top of each other. And her elbow is right below her shoulder again. She's down onto her forearm again. And she's picking her hips up <coughs> off the ground. And she's kind of creating a straight line here. She's not sagging her hips down. She's not raising too high. We're just keeping a nice straight line. She's really going to feel it through her sides. Right. Um, a more difficult one for this would be to go all the way up onto her feet. So just like that. So her knees are now off of the ground and she's holding her weight up there through her, uh, her forearm and her feet. Again, straight line. If, if you feel like your, um, your balance is a little off, you can put your arm down in front, you know, maybe not resting all the way down, but keeping it there just for safety. And you can also um, separate the feet. So one foot in front of the other, um, just if you're a little worried about toppling over um, like that. So my recommendation for the plank is to hold it for a few breaths. You know, if you're new at planking um, and it seems hard at first, hold it for a few breaths and then rest. Or you can work yourself all the way up to, you know, 30 seconds or whatever is comfortable. Again, if you start to feel exhausted, don't push yourself too hard. All right. So the last one we're going to do here is the bird dog. So she's going to move to her hands and knees. She's going to lift up one arm and then lift up the opposite leg. Like so, just like that. She's staying, keeping her head in a neutral position. So she's not looking down towards her knees. You want to stay looking right about towards your hands or you can look up, whichever. Um, and then she's going to, you know, count to two, count to three. She's going to switch. Keep alternating. Obviously, the longer she holds it there, the harder it's going to become. So again, if you're a little worried about your balance, just don't hold it as long. Another way to make it a little more difficult is to raise up with her arm. There we go. And now she's going to bring her arm out back to the front and then she's going to rest down. She can alternate that way as well. But again, be very careful with your balance. Um, but just like that. All right. So as I mentioned before, just check with your doctor to make sure that it's okay that you're exercising listen to your body. Don't push yourself too hard. Um, but like I said, also these are safe to do throughout your entire pregnancy.
So that has been this week's Fitbit, and we'll see you next time. Welcome back to the Wellness Lab. Uh, I'm Dr. Nick, and we're back here with, uh, with Crystal and Daphne, who are our two massage therapists here at the Wellness Center. Uh, we're going to be talking a little bit about how prenatal massage can help you stay pain-free throughout the pregnancy. So uh, what are some of the differences between a normal massage and, say, a, a prenatal massage? The main difference between a regular massage and a prenatal massage is positioning for okay. the massage. Um, normally, people are just on their back or on their stomach with their face in the face cradle. Mm -hmm. With prenatal massage, it's kind of difficult for that because they can't lie flat on their back because of the baby lying on the placenta, and they obviously can't lie on their stomach because there's not enough room and it's uncomfortable. Sure, sure. Um, so we do sideline for that. Right. And then we use these pillows, and nice. I will demonstrate how to do that with my lovely assistant here, Crystal. <laughs> Yeah, go ahead and just climb on up and uh, show us how it's done. So we'll kind of give you a little bit of a taste of what a what a prenatal massage uh, would look like. Um, you know, a lot of the things that we talked about in the first segment, where we talked about uh, stress on the the low back joints and also the sacroiliac joint, um, massage is going to help decrease a lot of that muscle tension to take pressure off those joints. But some of the other things that people don't really think about that prenatal massage may help with is morning sickness. Um, a lot of the, the lymph and the circulation that comes with, um, with prenatal massage can help with that morning sickness, especially uh, releasing some of the tension um, in that area around the, around the stomach. And then also uh, aiding in sleep. So, Massage helps release serotonin, uh, endorphins, and dopamine. It can actually decrease anxiety, and it's been shown to decrease some depression. And so that those, all those things obviously lead to greater sleep. And we can't guarantee that you're going to get a whole lot of great sleep after the baby's born, but we can do our best like while the baby's inside. And then the last thing is the mechanical side. So a lot of people have problems where the baby is actually um, irritating the sciatic nerve or sitting on the sciatic nerve. Uh, being able to relax those back muscles and uh, some of those those hip muscles and, uh, and SI joints can take a lot of pressure off that sciatic nerve and, and relieve some of that tension. And a big problem with uh, you know with pregnancy is you can't take a lot of the um, the pain medications. So staying natural and doing things that are going to be uh, dealing with the mecha mechanical issues, whether it be massage or chiropractic, are going to really help. So I appreciate you guys um, helping us out today and kind of showing us how, how that would work for a, a pregnant female. And uh, we'll be right back with the Q&A section. Um, Tina in Springfield asked, how, should, how soon should I bring my infant in for chiropractic care? What I typically tell parents is that bring them in as soon as you are ready or they are ready. Um, my two little girls, like I said in the, the earlier installment of the video, I adjusted them the first, that they were, first day that they were born in the hospital. The sooner you can get them in, the better. If you wait until they start having some issues or some problems, whether it be ear infections or colic or reflux or having issues sleeping at night, it can typically take a little bit longer. So what I recommend, bring them in before they start having any kind of issues or problems. Sarah in Rochester asks, I've heard that getting adjusted right before birth can make delivery easier. Is this true? Yes, absolutely. So we talked about, once again, in the earlier part of it, talking about that hormone relaxin allows that pelvis to, to expand, allow for baby to pass on through. As it expands, if, you're, if your body is expanding in ways that it maybe shouldn't or it's a little bit out of alignment, it may not allow for that ease of, of um, opening of the pelvic cavity for the baby to pass on through. And our last question comes from Leah in Springfield. Leah wonders how often should I be getting adjusted while pregnant? So in the earlier stages of pregnancy, depending on um, the, the woman's individual needs or, or symptoms or complaints, we'll see them a little bit more frequent up front. Once a week, twice a week, something like that, until they usually get to about that second trimester time. If they're basically free of any symptoms, we usually see them about once every three to four weeks in the initial stages of, of care. As they progress further through pregnancy and get towards the later stages in that third trimester, when most of the weight gain is happening and usually the more issues start to come up, we'll typically start to then increase that frequency to get them into the office a little bit more frequent towards the end of their care. All right. Thanks, Dr. Nick. Now, Dr. Nick is going to wrap this up. Thank you for joining us for this week's episode of the Wellness Lab. Next week, we'll be talking about office ergonomics and how to stay fit at work. Uh, make sure you head over to our website, wellnesslab.tv, where you can ask us any questions you might have about this week's episode and also download any tips that we talked about. So thank you for joining us and we'll see you next week.
To submit a question, watch a past episode, or to find out more about the Springfield Wellness Center, check us out on Facebook, subscribe to our YouTube channel, or find us on Instagram. Or check out our show website at wellnesslab.tv.